Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today for this one hour presentation about what attorneys need to know about data privacy and cybersecurity. My name is Michael Riella. I am a partner at the law firm of Tannenbaum, Helpern, Syracuse, and Herstritt in New York City, where I focus, among other things, on data privacy and cybersecurity law. The reason for this program is that attorneys in, all, in firms of all sizes, uh, from solo practitioners to lawyers in big law firms, as well as in-house counsel, face a number of ethical and other issues relating to cybersecurity, particularly in these days of data being breached and hackers running wild with the data that, that does get breached. Uh, it's very important for companies, law firms, lawyers to preserve the confidentiality and the security of their clients' data. Uh, companies and even law firms themselves are often valuable targets for hackers because they can hold vast collections of sensitive and highly valuable data, such as IP data, uh, non-public information relating to public companies, and other types of data. There are security threats that come from all different sorts of places, including individual hackers and international cyber criminals, the types of bad actors that get a lot of press. But it's not just the outside world that companies and lawyers need to be concerned about. Uh, there's also a, a company's own employees that could internally breach data either maliciously or negligently. First, in connection with figuring out how lawyers should keep their clients and their companies and firms as secure as, reasonable po as reasonably possible, it first helps to understand what types of data needs to remain secure. Uh, there are data privacy laws and cybersecurity re regulations that protect certain types of data. In addition, your company or your firm may have contractual obligations to keep other types of data secure, even if that type of information is not protected by laws or regulations. As a lawyer, you, you'll have clients who share all types of data with you, whether it be protected data under law or data that the client itself needs to keep confidential from others. So first, let's let's dive into what types of, of information, what types of data needs to be protected. Uh, and, and, and the first area that I'll talk about is personally identifiable information, uh, also known as PII or personal data. Um, this type of data is very sensitive and is protected under law because that type of information could be used by a third party to, to commit identity theft. And this type of personal identifiable information under normal or, or most state data breach notification statutes uh, would be any information that would include uh, social security numbers, driver's license numbers, or other governmental information, identification card numbers, bank account or credit card numbers, uh, together with security codes or some sort of access code to allow somebody access to uh, a financial account. Uh, debit card numbers, credit card numbers themselves, if circumstances exist where that number could be used to access uh, the individual's uh, target's bank account or credit card information. There's also types of, of information called biometric information that under a number of state statutes these days are protected as well. Biometric information could be things such as fingerprints, voice prints, retinas, iris images, and the like. The, the, the type of information about an individual that they can't change themselves is part of, uh, of their body, but 
given the way technology has evolved, that type of, in of information about people can be used to identify them.